Hey beautiful people, it's Dr. Bacon. Hope everyone's having a great day. This is El Nino, our 1987 Westphalia Wolfsburg edition weekender with 364,000 miles going strong. Uh, we have a couple episodes, other episodes about El Nino if you're interested. So today we are pretty excited. We have got we have purchased a T3 Techniques sway bar and looks like we paid about 275 for it. That got it that got it to our house too. So and uh, we have used their boots exclusively on our van. Uh, hey well, while we're talking about those and since we are so happy with their other product. I will show you. Um, we have one that's going on 90,000 miles. Um, another one expired at about 60,000. But it, um, I believe it was on a little, a little tight. So these are their boots and they're super strong boots. They run forever. Notice how dry our the bottom of our uh, engine is, we have an episode on that too, a, a fix for crooked or slightly leaking plugs. So we have um, pretty much replaced all the bushings. So we have all those nice purple bushings in here everywhere. The other thing we've done, we've gone to um, Schwenk Springs just the standard two-wheel drive Schwenk springs and that that helped a lot our springs were toast which is kind of the part of the reason I think our sway bar is also toast I think even putting a stock sway bar back on would help things but we're gonna do this what we did not buy is the heavy-duty end links we're gonna open this box and find out I think we may have to do a little internet searching but here we go we brought you along for the ride hope you enjoy it Alrighty, well here is our, uh, it, what was in the contents of that box, the bushing, some clamps, some hardware, some bolts that probably have to go with adding these extra two holes. I did, did notice you have to add two holes to the frame. Um, I think the other ones are secured in a tab, perhaps, so we'll look at that. I'm guessing this is grease and uh, some instructions, so I'll take a look at these. Well, they already refer to a photo below to make sure the bracket is oriented correctly, and unfortunately, there's no photographs whatsoever on this. So maybe we have to go on the internet to see that photograph. Okay, here's our missing photograph, so no biggie. And it looks pretty straightforward. These are a little egged out. Okay, not too bad. These still have the powder coating on the insides of them. That's amazing. Okay, if there's a hard part, this will be it. So there's a couple options. Warming these up might help. Somehow getting a clamp on them so you can squish them in here to get them started. A bench vise would be gold right here too. Okay, our old Costa Mesa brake and alignment is no longer, but we met Paul, and uh, he let us use his hydraulic press for, I gave him $24. He was pretty excited about that. And uh, we got these in safely and without destroying the bushings. This is our rusty Charlotte, the forerunner we drive when we gotta, <laughs> when our other vehicles apart. <laughs> it's pretty junky. <laughs> 
Okay, now we have to add 21 64th holes to accommodate this extra hole. This geometry isn't quite perfect. I'm sure when we run that thing tight, it'll flatten out, but less than perfect. So we're just gonna go center this the best we can. And go from there. Our next step is to install these bushings approximately where they are on the old ones. It's interesting, they have this material that's far from smooth for a bushing surface. That's a little surprising to me. So we have this container of grease and we'll um, liberally grease up inside of these and snap them on there. Okay, we lifted this thing into place. This needs to be above the steering arms. We started these by hand. If you're by yourself, it would probably help if you had something to prop up the other end. It would have, could have been a little easier. And here's the other side. So the thing we're going to do is grease these inner surfaces and then just leave these in place. We're not going to put any grease on the inside where they both come in contact, only in the outside. These should not rotate, they should be locked in place. Okay, this is the rest of our hardware. We're on the ho our home stretch. So the order is the bolt goes through the swing arm and then, or through the swing arm, through the sway bar, and then into the bushing, and then all the washers are on the outside. So the next step is to put the links back in place and it's probably easier just to load these as we go. This is reassembled but not tightened. We're not going to we're going to keep this end dry and we're going to wait till we do get this far on the other side and then sacrifice one more glove to grease the end of this and the end of this uh, before we put these uh, put the big washer on there and it looks like this bushing just rides right on this face of this uh, of the bar it feels so good to do things by yourself and know that it's done as good as it could be done or at least if it wasn't done right you know what's wrong Plus, if you ever have problems, it's not like you're going to walk into some surprise. 
one hand this for you guys. If I can. I think I can. I'm getting back in the grease. <laughs> Alright, I guess that's just inevitable. These are nylon locking nuts, so I don't have to worry about getting a little grease on there. The only thing that remains is to tighten these bolts. So what I want to do is, I think I'm going to rock the van back and forth a little and then get a clamp, a, C, uh, a vice grip and squeeze this clamp and bend it a little bit into the proper shape rather than trying to force it down in there. Uh, otherwise it's going to force this thing backwards and it may not sit as flat as it could. Okay, these get torqued to 27, I believe. Oh baby, this has been a long time coming. Oh my god, it is so rock solid. It is very, very noticeable just pushing on the van. Okay, let's do it. A little quick drive. We're gonna back run back by our um, our new friend Paul, see if we can get a cameo. He said he has a 72 Super Beetle. And uh See if we get a cameo from him. He helped us press that pushing in. We gave him. We gave him 25 bucks. Maybe they'll want to plug their new business. It says German Auto Repair. Hey, T T3 did a pretty good job. Everything bolted up. A couple things needed a little coercion, but nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary, I would say. So, very nice job, T3. One more product they seem to have done a really good job on. I see they have a, a manual transmission kit that would like <laughs> be amazing. It also is very expensive. But. Okay, off we go. Well, no cameo, but oh my gosh, it drives so different. One last thing, I'm gonna straighten the steering out. We got an alignment around the corner. They did a terrible job with the alignment. Well, they, they basically didn't touch the rear. Hey guys, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care, tell your friends you love them. And drive safe, drive carefully, bye now. Dr. Bacon